Hey YouTube, Untamed here. So today I'm going to present to you the three things that I dislike most about my 80 series Land Cruiser here. For those of you who don't know, I do have a 1997 Toyota Land Cruiser Collector's Edition here. I bought it fairly recently, about maybe about two months ago at this point, a little bit more than that. And, and it's a phenomenal vehicle. I love it. And it's really meeting my expectations of what I thought it would be and what I hoped it would be. So let me open with that. I really do love this vehicle. It's a ton of fun. It just has a ton of charm, too. Um, but no vehicle is perfect, of course. So today I want to just highlight the three things that, that quote-unquote bug me the most about it. Uh, and again, there's always going to be people who get their, their feathers ruffled when I talk about dislikes. Take it with a grain of salt. It really is a phenomenal vehicle. I'm very happy with it. So let me make that extremely clear from the beginning. But if we are splitting hairs, the three things that I do not like, I'm going to start with the most obvious Everybody talks about it, and for very, very good reason, and that is the power delivery. It is borderline pathetic how weak this thing is. I'll be full throttle on the freeway trying to, just trying to get onto the freeway and get up to speed, freeway speeds, and you know, pedal to the metal, and it's just chugging along, trying to get up to that speed. So very, very bleak in that regard. We do have the straight six here, the, the six cylinder engine, and it does not crank out a ton of horsepower so it's definitely weak that is perhaps my biggest gripe with it especially when i jump between my 200 series over there the v8 the 5.7 liter v8 and then jumping into this it's just night and day difference but we don't buy these to go quick we don't buy them for the power we buy them for for a number of other reasons right so number one let's get that out of the way the power delivery number two and, and hopefully this isn't unique to mine. I haven't really heard too many people talk about it, but the, whenever I turn in this, it is extremely choppy. It's a very a, a choppy turning, almost like when you have it in four-wheel drive. It's a full-time four-wheel drive vehicle, but whereas like with the 200 series or quote-unquote modern full-time four-wheel drive vehicles, you know, their limited slip differential helps out tremendously in not making that choppy, you know, four by four feeling in tight turns and tight spaces if that makes sense well like when you're turning into a a parking space you know it begins to kind of chirp the wheels a little bit chirp the tires as you're going in so it becomes kind of restricted feeling so that i do not love but number three here is going to be kind of a compilation of things and that is not a dig at this at all it's a dig at myself so you guys know i've owned a number of vehicles and Oftentimes, they tend to be brand new. So over the years, I have definitely developed a, maybe maybe a little bit snobbish at this point, but I've, yeah, I've gotten used to new vehicles at the end of the day. And I'm, I've gotten used to not having any issues with vehicles and just I'm used to everything just working perfectly. Um, so I would, I think I would be lying if I said I went into this hoping that it would be a little bit more perfect, uh, if I'm being honest with you guys. So I'm finding a bunch of little bugs and kinks and quirks with this. That are a little frustrating to me so I'm gonna highlight some of them in this video okay so me having OCD in general and just having the yeah you know, I'm gonna get them fixed for sure but just having the you know blemishes throughout I get the door ding there you got little bumps and bruises little like stuff like this you can see it there a little dent there you know, the gas cap has a couple dents in it. You know, it is not perfect, but it is 26 years old. And I, and I need to remind myself of that. Like right here. This is the, well, thankfully, thankfully the only um, clear coat peel on the entire vehicle is right here. But even this kind of looks like it has a little bit of a ding in it, right? So stuff like that, <laughs> it really irks me having OCD. But again, that's not a dig at this. This is almost as perfect as it can get for a 26-year-old vehicle, okay? So don't take to the keyboards and totally, totally beat me up. That is me getting used to, you know, not having something that's quote-unquote brand new. Uh, and I really just, I think this is, owning this is going to be good for me because it's going to help me kind of get past that superficial stuff, right? And I think it's kind of good for, for me to own this type of vehicle. Um, so I'll kind of show you down the side of this one. A couple other really small ones on this side but beyond that we're talking like the I'll show you let me actually fire it up like the the windows are 
pretty weak. And I guess, you know, I've owned an old vehicle before. I was in high school the last time I had a last time I had an old old vehicle. Not to say this is old old. The vehicle I had in high school was in the 70s. So definitely a little bit more of a classic back then, but watch it's not gonna do it because I'm doing a video of it. So go down just fine. But on the way up, you get oh that's actually really good. But you know, if I do up and down a few times and go do a couple drive-throughs, it becomes extremely sluggish on the way up. One time it didn't even want to go up and actually had to assist it on the way up. So again, just a window motor. Yeah, replacing that motor in there is is what that would do. That would do the trick, I'm sure. So that's an example there. You know, I got stuff like this, which is kind of flimsy. You know, it always will pop down like that. Again, very small stuff at the end of the day. I get it, but collectively, it becomes kind of bothersome. Um, and what I'm getting at with all this is just me getting used to having a vehicle that requires constant TLC. And, and some people really love that. I remember I used to love that too when I was younger uh, in high school and college, but nowadays between work and coming home and being a dad of, of 49 kids, like, you know, having the time to tinker with things has kind of gone out the window a little bit. So again, this is not totally a dig at this vehicle, it's a dig more at me and my lifestyle, what I've gotten used to if I'm being honest with you guys, but I'm just kind of shooting you straight. So another thing is, is even when I first purchased it, the dealership didn't tell me, but the um, the stereo does not work. So again, just one more little bit of a bummer, one more little project to dive into and fix. I'm sure it'd be small. I'm sure it's going to be a, a small issue to, to fix it. Uh, maybe even a fuse. I don't even know. I haven't, I haven't looked. At, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I haven't looked into it at all. Um, but that's one other thing. The antenna. So the antenna is a power or electronic antenna that goes up and down. Let me see if I can kind of show you. Boop. So it's right there. Technically speaking, when I hit this button right here, up, that should go up. You know, but nothing happens. Of course, when I push that. And nothing, of course, when it's already down. So, you know, just another thing, another small project for me to, to tackle. I'm trying to think what else. There's a few other little things, you know. It really is as close to perfect as it can be. Um, when I first got it, the first time I drove it, I literally the first time I drove it to work, um, when I put it in park and I tried to pull my key out, it wouldn't allow me to actually turn it all the way all the way to um, the lock position, you know, to actually take out the key. It only allowed me to go to the, um, uh, you know, the ACC uh, portion right here and I actually could not pull out the key. So I was sitting there with it in that uh, and I had to figure out, I Google a couple videos, it was pretty easy to figure out, but still I have to park it just right where when I put it in park, I have to hear the click, like I have to make sure that there's an audible click coming out of the, the transmission here, coming out of the, the gear selection, I should say. And then, and then I can pull it out. And what I've learned is when I actually turn into a spot, whip it into like a parking spot, and then try to pull out the key, it won't work, if that makes sense. But if I kind of whip it into a spot and then back it up and go forward a couple times, it allows me to actually retract the key, which again, just another little kind of little quirk that you have to get used to. Um, super small thing but even when I got it the steering wheel the alignment is totally off so like this is what it looks like when I'm going straight down the road so again just an alignment easy fix but the point I'm getting at is just a lot of little little things the seat right here I had my uncle visiting for the weekend and and, and he, he tried he tried getting it or he tried uh, backing it up a little bit it's an electric seat where you can pull it back I'll show you so, I mean, it looks like that over there, and it, it got stuck. So, I mean, he ended up going forward, all the way forward, and then now it can't go back at all. The engine, or the engine, the motor's trying to work. It sounds like it's twisting or something's happening back there, but I think it's caught on some carpet pretty good. So, I'm sure another easy fix, just another little project to tackle. So, it's just another, another little chore to, to jump into again. I need, it's just more so me having to have a, a better attitude about tackling this and, and really just owning an older vehicle, right? Let me unlock it. You know, 
all things considered, when it comes to like the imperfections and the little things that are wrong with it, like this is broken off, it's all very small at the end of the day. Um, and I just need to remind myself of that. You know, these seats, excellent condition, having been reupholstered, I love that. The green carpet, <laughs> I don't know, I'm still kind of torn on that part of it, but, oops, right there. Love the fact that it has the tailgate. Um, and this is my own ignorance and my own fault for not asking, but I actually just assumed it had the third row back here. You know, the collector's edition came with it back in 97. I just assumed they had a bunch of photos, obviously the interior, but not the back seat. Nothing that I even showed back here. I just kind of assumed it was back here. So my own fault for not even asking the question, but when they did the carpet, redid the carpet, they obviously took out the third row seats. Thankfully, thanks to one of you guys, Nigel, you reached out to me and I ended up buying your third row uh, seats. So I have those in the garage and I'll be putting them in. Uh, because part of why I got this vehicle too was because it did have a third row seats. Because you guys know we have the 72 kids and want to be able to fit the family in here and actually go uh, on adventures together as a family. So I'll be putting those in shortly. Thanks again, Nigel. But all that to say, I know a lot of you guys, and even, even as I'm saying it out loud, I kind of feel bad because it really is me splitting hairs at the end of the day. This is older vehicle ownership and I can't really call it old vehicle it's still late 90s at the end of the day it's not like it's from the 70s or anything so it is fun I'm just excited to actually have a little bit more time to to tinker with it and, and share my share my my progress on those projects with you guys if you care to see that uh, and join me for that so there you have it guys there are the three things that I dislike most about my 1997 Toyota Land Cruiser Collector's Edition let me know what your thoughts are appreciate you watching as always until next time